I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Rangers. But everybody, welcome back to the Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk. Um, the juxtaposition we really needed at this moment, uh, <laughs> where we gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Do you are you feeling so confident? You're buying everybody in the bar. You just want a beer. You know, it's like, eh, I'll do that. Or you need a shot because eh, I just really need a shot on this. All right. So first things first, the New York Rangers should be concerned about Artemi Panarin, Mr. Fulkowski. I'm going to say beer, and for the out reasons I outlined before, uh, missing his center. Uh, Capo Caco is, should be back Friday, they're saying, which is great news for Rangers fans. Um, but he, I mean, he still didn't look great with Mika Zibanejad, who, who had some a small amount of success playing with, you know, in terms of uh, their sample size, I should say, the six games at the beginning of the 1920 season, and then some overlapping shifts at even strength. Uh, but I, I'll give Artemi Panarin some, some breathing room here just because of the fact that he hasn't had his line mates and Philip Heedle and him don't, don't seem to click at all. So I'm going to say beer, but because there's definitely some things that he's doing that I'm not a fan of, like his decision-making with the puck has been really weird. His passing has just been off. Something about his game overall has just looked off aside from not having his, his line mates. So there are some things that I want to see change with him, but I, I think having Ryan Strom and Capo Caco will help in that regard. So beer. Anthony. Make the short and sweet. Um, he's he's an elite, he's an elite player in this league. He's not playing like it right now. The Rangers need him to be that player. And right now his game just looks completely off. But I think um, he'll he'll figure it out because he's he's too good not to. Beer. Okay. Uh, I will actually go to shot. And the reason why I'm going to go with shot is because I, it, it's our Timmy Panarin. He's, he's played for now several different coaches, Quenville, a Savard Quinn, and, um, and now Gallant. Gerard Gallant is, uh, is, is a hell of a coach. And I mean, you play for John Tortorella, you can play for anybody. So uh, he'll be fine. Don't worry about that. He's going to be fine. All right, moving on. This one's going to go right back to you, Anthony. Uh, Islander Zach Parise is not going to fit in. I mean, so f I, I mean, I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go shot because he hasn't registered a point yet, but he he's played on the PK, which he's been good on, uh, and the line with uh, Wallstrom and Pajot, um, He's got in on the forecheck. He's he's freed up pucks to get to Wallstrom. Um, and you know, Ixon, he's what he is at this point. He plays on the third line. You know, he's not in he's not in their top six. Um, you know, he knows his role in the team. Like I said, he gives you ten to you know, ten to fifteen goals. It's a it's a win. Um, but you know, Wallstrom has already said that, you know, seeing Prize around every day and how he's a pro and how he works, you know, has has been good for him. And that alone for Wallstrom, you know, their best young player and best forward, best shooter. Um, you know, that's that's a positive. So um, I, I think it's a good fit for him. Um, so yeah, it's, I, uh, for me, it's, it's, it's a shot, you know, I'm not expecting to be anything else. What, I'm going to ask a question here, but by not going to fit, kind of explain that a little bit. I'm sorry, because it just fit in what regard, I guess, produce as an Islander, or they're not going to find the role for him. Well, I mean, if you're saying not going to find a role, I'm going to say shot. Okay. Because I, I think so far in that line, he looks like a piece that works pretty well with the other two pieces. Uh, I mean, he's not going to give you the points that he gave you like in his early to, to middle of the, the pack days in, in Minnesota or even his best devil's days, obviously. But I mean, if if he's in there on the four check, which he is, he's still decent at that. I mean, Anthony alluded to the fact that he's a decent penalty killer still. I mean, he's he's winning puck battles along the boards. He's getting the puck to the other guys that really need the puck on that line, like Walsh and Pajot. I I don't 
I, I think he fits pretty well. He just he's not going to give you a ton of points anymore. And I think yes. as an Iola fan, if you if you you had to have that understanding that you weren't getting the Zach Parise of two thousand nine. So um, I, I have to say, shot here. All right. Um, I'm only saying beer for this because I still wonder what his role is going to end up being. Um, it doesn't matter whether or not he's doesn't have a point or not. I, I, I still don't know. And I, the player himself, he'll be receptive to whatever he's going to, going to be for the Islanders. Uh, Zach Parise is a guy that could be on my team six days a week and twice on Sunday. I just don't know where he's going to be. Is he going to be first line? He's not going to put him on the second line. I doubt they're breaking up the B's. We already but, we already said what he is. He plays on the third line with yeah with and, and Wallstrom. He could move up. I'm just saying it could happen. So uh, I I'm a little confused by that. I think he'll be fine. He'll be. I, I think he'll be fine. But it's just I I I also don't know. So it's it's fair to say you don't know sometimes. By the way, Anthony, every time you stop the camera, you get better looking. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we have Mark hitting on uh, Anthony. Uh, well, no, <laughs> not hitting on Anthony. Hitting on myself with yeah, my headshots. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anthony is a stud. I mean, he's not a Yeah, I know. He's, he's, our, he's our beefcake. He's the one. Yeah. You know. All yeah. right. This one, another tailor-made one for John Fulkowski. Connor McDavid will break 150 points. And let me start it by saying, God, I hope I'm buying everybody around. And I'll tell you why. Because I got him on my fantasy team. <laughs> Score 400. I don't care. Just just get it, get past 150. So I, I want to say that. He could definitely do it with the with his play. I mean, I can't believe he's doing it with the line mates that he's got. I, all right, but he ain't doing it. He ain't getting 200 with uh with Curry and Glenn Anderson and Tekin and the way Gretzky did. But go ahead, John. I'm going to be bold here and I'm going to buy a round. I oh, think, yeah, I think, I'm going to use this one. I, I, I think he's going to do it. I, I think Connor McDavid really is under the bright lights right now. And they went out and they made some improvements to the team. Well, uh, it's debatable whether they're improvements or not at this point, but we'll, we'll see. But they went out and they, they got some players in. Um, I know they lost Adam Larson, but they brought in a, a veteran in Duncan Keith. They brought in Cody Cece. Um, I, that's bold, Stephen. That's bold. That is really, really bold. But Connor McDavid has now added a one-timer to his arsenal. Like, that's scary to think about because that guy, I remember at the 2017 All-Star game, he was doing the, uh, the, the accuracy shooting contest. And he was like, this is not really made for me because I don't really have a great shot. Well, he went out and improved that. And <laughs> now he's adding a one-timer to it. And he's already the best player in the game. So I, I honestly think that the sky's the limit for him. He's scoring at a near three point per game pace right now. I know that's probably not going to sustain, but I mean, I, I think he's going to do it this year. I, I, he was on pace for it last year. I, I think he, he does it this year. Anthony. I'm going round. Uh, I mean, he's I'm clearly, go this one again. <laughs> he's clearly the best, the best player um in the league uh, i think the most talented player the league has ever seen in pure skill um and you know like you see look what, again look what he did last year the guy had over 100 points in 56 games and he he's take he's basically you know picking up where he left off um him and dry sidle none, none of them no signs of any of any slowing down anytime soon um, and I, I just think he's too talented not to. I think I think he's really going to reach a benchmark here that we haven't seen in a very long time. I, he's he's just got so many tools, and that's unbelievable. But we're going to go from one number over one number one overall draft pick in Connor McDavid to a guy with another load of talent in his team. The Toronto Maple Leafs are in serious trouble, guys. Anthony, um, I'm. I'm actually going to say kind of dates back to what we talked about when the seasons first started when the Islanders lost two games. It's it's still it's still early. So serious trouble. I'm gonna go shot. Um it's it's not 
Uh, listen, they're not in a good situation. They're struggling. Um, we all know what their what their flaws are because it seems like Kyle Dubas has never fixed it. Doesn't learn. Um, but they don't really they don't really defend the best. Um, they lost Morazic to an injury, uh, which I thought already as it is, and with him healthy, Morazic Campbell isn't the best goaltending situation. Um, and again, I I think they're kind of I, I described them as a paper tiger in the past, but now their issue is that. Florida's for real and they've arrived. So that just adds another team they, they have to battle with because prior to the Panthers really breaking out, it was just the Bruins and the Lightning. So you knew they were going to grab at least one of those three spots. But now Florida, um, you know, that that's in question. Um, the good thing for them is I don't think Boston's really that good of a team either. I think that's a, I think that's a saving grace for them. Um, I think – I don't think Dubas will let it get too far away. I think if things trend down, you know, pretty significantly here, I, I don't think he's going to let tail spin to the point where it's going to be beyond fixable. I think he might make a move, whether it be a coaching move or, or make a move in the room to shake things up. Uh, it, but it's just it's just too early to say they're in serious trouble. Um, I don't like them at, overall with their makeup, um, but I think Matthews and Marner and Nylander. You also don't like them for other reasons. Yeah, is, yeah. Well, there's enough <laughs> talent to, to at least bring them to the dance. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if things, at, at, I would say as of right now, their best case scenario is they squeak into the playoffs and they lose again in the first round. But um, yeah, but I'm going shot here just because I think it's, I think it's too early. But I don't like the early signs. Phil. <clears throat> I'm also going with a shot. I, I just I, I think that this team is just too good in terms of talent to to miss the playoffs. If they miss the playoffs, then everybody's heads have got to roll at that point. You 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 really got to start making some serious moves at that point. I'd imagine Dubis would be gone. Maybe even Sheldon Keefe would even be gone at that point as well. But um, I agree with Anthony. I think they would make a coaching change and a probably a GM change before they do any type of serious moves. Um, especially if they're in some sort of tailspin and the organization feels that they need better management choices at the top. I think they would make that move before the deadline so that that new GM could make the right moves for the team heading into the playoffs. I think that just makes too much sense at that point. Um, I don't think Boston is still better than the Leafs at this point. I think the Leafs are just playing bad hockey. Um, I, Austin Matthews obviously coming back from a wrist injury. That's not helping them. William Nylander was playing well to start the season. Uh, you need more from Mitch Marner. Uh, you need more from John Tavares. And you need more from Morgan Riley. Their goaltending really isn't that good. I would say, if anything, when we get to like the 20 game mark and they're 500 or under or something like that, I would really start to be a little more concerned at that point. But again, it, it, it's way too early. And you, Anthony, you brought up Florida and I, I, I'm not trying to go back to what we were just talking about before, but what happens to Florida if Joel Quenville is, is, is fired or is forced to step down or, or whatever? That's a great Cause, question. Cause, Cause that could, that could really hurt the Panthers. And that is a great question. And you got to remember, the Panthers, they're not without flaws. Yeah, they have a good goaltending tandem, and Bobrovsky looks to be bouncing back, and Spencer Knight looks to be the future, and their forward group is great. But their defense is still a little questionable. They yeah, need that's really right. another. Especially and they need if another, Ekblad goes down again. Yeah, Ekblad goes down. If they, they need another top four defenseman as it is. So if they don't make that move and it, it, the, the coaching situation ends up being a problem with everything with this, then, you know, that could hurt Florida and that could help Toronto. So I'm not I'm not ready to, to really get to the sky's falling mode with Toronto yet. So shot. OK. I'm going to take it. A, I'm going to take a beer. Uh, the reason why I'm and I even threw this up there, guys, it's not just that I don't like. Uh, I, I mean, I like the Maple Leafs. I've never been against the Maple Leafs. Um, but what exactly do they ho- hang their hats on? I mean, uh, if the... <laughs> that's great. First of all, by the way, I love Steve Dangle. He's excellent. That's so do I. His and and yeah. Leafs fan reaction is is amazing. But what does this team really hang their hat on? I don't think they're as good offensively as they were two years ago. I don't think they're good defensively at all. They have no grit. 
Last year was a fake scale. They're, yeah, they were the best of the worst in a week yep. north division. Like yep. when we posed the same question last week with Montreal, the answer was buy everybody around. Montreal was done. Montreal has talent to be okay. Yeah, right. but here's, here's the thing about Montreal. I, I know the division they're in at this point, it's just too good. But even them, no Weber, no one writes. I don't I don't think you're truly done until you're like maybe like 10 or 12 games under 500. I mean, right now, are they mm-hmm. one and six? The Habs? Yeah, the Habs. Yeah, you could go on a run and get back to 500. Pretty yeah, easy. Even, even, even them, they're not, they're not done. But, I mean, they're, they, that's a daunting task they have to look up to, though. I'll say that. Yeah, and, and I, I'll say this to, to, to just to quickly address the rest of the ELA's comment, which this, this is a great post, by the way. Um, I, I will disagree that Matthews and Marner's numbers were inflated be, uh, because of last year because of who they played all year. You might be right about that to a point, but Austin Matthews in 2020 was on pace for over 50 goals, my friend. You got to remember that. And yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that part. Mitch Marner was a 90 point player in 2019. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't agree with that, but you're right. Last year was a fake scale and they were, they were the, the top dogs of a really bad division. Yeah. Well, Let's let's wrap it up with this regarding the Maple Leafs. If they yeah. fail to make the playoffs, or if they get bounced again in the first round, this is the year where I would say it's probably like a ninety percent chance that. Well, yeah, but I was also getting, one of the big four is going, and it's probably Nylander or Marner because Matthews yeah. ain't going anywhere, and no one's touching that Tavares contract. Nope, nope, so, nope, it's nope. Either Nylander or Marner. And again, but the word is the word. Uh, actually, I I highlighted serious. But the word trouble is in there, and I'm still not really liking Campbell and Morazic, the two of them, no. in that either. So no. it's I don't think they're going to do it with goaltending and defense. I think they're going to have to do it with their offense, and I don't think they're as good offensively as they were. So If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.